Hey guys, welcome to The Market is Open. Check out our website, themarketisopen.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about Tesla's virtual power plant and their auto bidder product in relation to vehicle to grid technology and the million mile battery. Elon Musk is expected to be hosting the Tesla Battery Day sometime in the coming weeks or months, and there have been no shortages of rumors for products and innovations that Tesla aims to unveil during this Battery Day. One of these things is called the Virtual Power Plant, which Tesla has been cooking up behind the scenes, and there's speculation that they may unveil this product or service that could connect distributed power walls and Tesla vehicles to help the power grid. Tesla also quietly released a professional product called AutoBidder, which may lead to the potential of virtual power plant technology in the future. However, while this sounds a little pie in the sky, I believe that Tesla's virtual power plant is actually already here. So let's have a look. But first, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and smash the like button to help support this video. You can also support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open, where we give a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. So a virtual power plant is made up of many distributed parts, small scale energy generation or storage endpoints that can all come together through software to behave like a single larger power plant, minus the smokestacks of course. For example, there may be a wind or solar or battery assets available on the grid for power generation. There's a centralized controller, in this case someone or a team of people who operate a subsystem or portion of the grid. During peak power usage times, the grid may need more power temporarily to meet demand. Currently, this central authority perhaps requires its own peaker plant or natural gas plant that it can fire up at certain times of the day in order to boost electricity production and meet demand, otherwise you could get blackouts. However, these gas-powered plants, A, run on fossil fuels a lot of the time, B, they don't exactly match the flow of electricity demand, and C, they're the responsibility of this central authority. Maybe they had to purchase this peaker plant, which only is required 5% of the time, but they had to make big investments in order to buy this infrastructure. So an interesting concept is, why not make use of the various energy assets that are already connected to the grid, integrate them all together through software, such that they behave as a single entity. For example, your home solar panels might not be nearly enough to boost the grid output during peak hours on its own, but maybe if we combine solar panels from a thousand homes, we have a virtual peaker plant. So how exactly would this work? Let's first look at the Australia Hornsdale Power Reserve, which was having constant issues and blackouts before Tesla helped them out. It's a power generation plant that's powered using wind farms. This is the one where Elon Musk said he would complete the battery project within 100 days or it's free. Tesla actually completed the battery installation and grid connection within 63 days. This is the largest battery deployment in the world, and it can react significantly faster than a gas-fired plant at matching the electricity load on the grid. Remember that if you produce too much power, you need to dump it somewhere, and if you don't produce enough, well, you have angry customers and blackouts. The problem with wind farms is that you need to use the power as it's being generated, and if you're producing power and no one's using it, then that's simply a waste. And then when the load spikes, you're not producing enough to keep up. So Tesla's batteries are key here. Historically, batteries have been expensive and they don't hold that much power. However, Tesla is the largest producer of batteries in the world and they continue to bring down the cost and increase energy density. So basically, they install the batteries, the batteries hold excess power that's generated, and they can discharge that power when the grid needs it to really match the demand quite perfectly and instantaneously, something that even fossil fuel peaker plants cannot do. And also nuclear and some hydro generation plants just produce electricity constantly. They're really not that flexible. You turn it on and it just keeps going. For hydro, you can adjust the amount of water at some stations, but basically not all the electricity can come from these sources because of their lack of flexibility and you need to have these peaker type plants. Now, Germany is one example where they've been really big on solar panels for many, many years, but without batteries, the solar panels don't make a lot of sense given the peaks and troughs with demand usage. Now the Hornsdale power reserve itself isn't exactly a virtual power plant, or it could be, but it's not exactly a distributed system. It's big enough to be a power plant on its own. For example, say you are the Hornsdale battery reserve grid and you're connected to a nearby grid that requires some extra power at peak usage time. Say it's gonna be a really hot week and everyone's air conditioner is gonna be on. Well, because they really need that power, they're willing to pay a high price for it because of this peak. At the same time, if batteries at Hornsdale are already fully charged and they likely won't be needed, maybe the weather won't be so hot for the area that Hornsdale supplies power to, then they can agree to sell that power to the nearby grid. Maybe a few weeks later, the same nearby grid is generating excess power and needs to dump it somewhere. 
So they end up giving it away at a great price. Well, Horn still can check its battery capacity and see if there's extra space to charge its batteries with that power on the cheap. So effectively, Tesla's batteries have become energy trading vehicles and can help power plants make or save money. However, Tesla was actually encouraging residents of Southern Australia to join their virtual power plant, which is made up of a network of battery assets. This would be an actual virtual power plant as it would abstract away the individual batteries and aggregate them all together into a unit that looks like a single power plant. Tesla was actually offering, and will probably offer in the future, huge discounts for Southern Australia residents who connected their power walls to the system, saving $6,200 Australian dollars, which are about 90 cents on the Canadian dollar and 65 cents on the US dollar. Nevertheless, that's huge savings, about 60% off the price of a power wall. So that just hints at how much money there is floating around these grid systems and how valuable Tesla's batteries are. Especially if you can unlock value by adding the product to Tesla's network that makes Powerwall and other battery products extremely competitive against other fossil fuels or even other batteries where the company doesn't have this type of setup. So in order to unlock this value, Tesla created a piece of software called AutoBidder, which allows the operator of Tesla batteries and energy resources to trade power. AutoBidder is an energy optimization and market participation platform, so it's a professional platform that allows utilities and energy producers to better monetize their batteries by trading energy in real time. Furthermore, AutoBidder is already operating at the Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia. So how exactly does this work? Well, the cool thing about AutoBidder is that it could use large-scale deployments like the giant battery deployment that Tesla created at Hornsdale, or it can use a distributed set of batteries such as those power walls in residential homes and aggregate them together to create a virtual power plant and bid using that energy asset. And anyone who agreed to connect their power wall to the system would benefit from AutoBidder. AutoBidder is all about software, and again, for those who still think uh, that Tesla is a plain old car company, well, they're certainly pretty good at software and AutoBidder is just the tip of the iceberg. So first off, AutoBidder, which sounds like a product for trading cars, but it's actually for energy, though in the near future it might be energy stored in cars. Basically, the software uses strategies similar to rapid fire stock traders, but in the energy market. They connect to and look at multiple energy markets in order to immediately capitalize on opportunities using the energy assets that it controls. AutoBidder uses machine learning, something that Tesla specializes in, to forecast prices, loads, generation, and they use the weather data to make decisions. One example that they gave at Tesla was that if there's going to be a big peak in demand, AutoBidder would jump in with its energy assets and supply the grid with power. However, the strategy was then to charge up the batteries after the peak, which ended up causing a peak of its own. So they've learned to spread it out a little bit better throughout the day. And so far they've had many learnings with the AutoBidder product as they're in the midst of deploying it. Guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the thumbs up button. We'd super appreciate that. Okay, so people are buying power walls and vehicles. These are distributed batteries. How long will it take Tesla to create this distributed power plant and add the necessary hardware to its power wall devices? And when will they launch this concept into a product? It could take years to have everyone upgrade or buy new power walls. Uh, the million mile battery needs to come up for vehicles and for this idea to be ironed out and the crazy amount of software that needs to be written to manage this complex problem. So maybe we'll get some timelines at battery day, right? It might take a couple years. Uh, well, actually, surprise, Tesla has already done most of this. Tesla says that they already have IoT chips on all of their devices or all of their products, including their vehicles, which are ready for vehicle to grid technology. These are basically sensors that can measure certain things like temperature, voltage, etc. They can also control aspects of the device with controllers, for example, accepting a remote command to begin charging or discharging, so they already have the necessary inverters in place. Furthermore, each device that Tesla has already shipped has an edge computing platform built in, which you might already be familiar with, and that's basically software running on a Linux operating system, which is Tesla's platform of choice, and they can do whatever they want with this software as long as they have the sensors or controllers uh, existing for what they want to use it for. And Tesla can push new software as usual over the air. So we know that that's true for vehicles, uh, but it's also true for power walls. And I guess it seems obvious, but this is exactly what's required for the virtual power plant. And all of the devices are already connected to the cloud. And you can think of this cloud as being connected to the control center, which can pull information from all of these devices and also send information and commands back to each individual device. So this is a high level view of Tesla's architecture, which I thought was pretty cool. They use WebSockets to communicate from the device to the cloud, and they have Apache Kafka, which is software for streaming loads of information from a distributed set of devices in this case. 
So that's how they can send the sensor information to the server. At the same time, they can send commands back from the server to the device. And this is found in every Tesla product. You might already be familiar with the fact that Tesla has detailed logging for every vehicle that it can access remotely. Other automaker competitors have likely just started trying to copy Tesla with this and to view their devices as IoT devices. I think they've been missing out because every car sold up until now or a couple years ago simply has no connection to the internet at all. But because Tesla is vertically integrated, that's a key strength because they have access to all of the telemetry data from all aspects of power walls and the vehicles. In terms of vehicles, if you're an automaker and you purchased an electronic part from another supplier, for example, it might be more difficult to get fine-grained telemetry data or send commands to that device if they're not supported. On top of this, Tesla runs applications, for example, AutoBidder, which can talk to devices that contain a battery. And that includes supercharger stations, which is pretty exciting as well. But from the application, it might want to look at device data, Tesla has a Postgres SQL database, that's a typical relational database with rows and columns, a sort of like looking at a Microsoft Excel sheet or grid. They also use InfluxDB, which is a time series database, and it's useful for perhaps uh, making graphs using their data over a period of time. And they say that they're going to store the data for the lifetime of the device. So this is all stored on the server, so there's basically infinite storage space. They wouldn't store the complete history on the device itself because it would run out of storage space pretty quickly. Two other things I found very interesting was that Tesla says they do a lot of virtual modeling of real life devices, which they call digital twins. That's basically just storing enough information or details about a specific real life device so that they know its attributes and capabilities. For example, a particular device is an inverter. Here's the serial number. It's in this power wall with this other serial number. And that way they can do things like find me all of the devices in existence with this type of inverter in it or find me all setups with two or more power walls connected to each other. The key here is that they have all of the data and they can query it any way they want. The other thing is that Tesla says they have over 150 microservices running. Uh, that's quite a bit. These can be lightweight services that run as needed. They say that they have one for real-time streaming aggregations, which they use for their virtual power plant or their auto bidder application. The nice thing about microservices is that they're separated from each other. If one of the services were to go down, for example, it doesn't take down the whole system, only that service would be down. Now one downside is that it may be difficult to manage so many microservices. So in addition to that, they use Kubernetes, which is, uh, well, I believe it was originally developed by Google, but what they use it for is to help keep their services running with no downtime. Say you want two copies of a service for redundancy or for load balancing, Kubernetes is great at scaling these applications up and restarting them when they fail. They also use something I haven't heard of, but it's called Akka and Akka Streams, which is used for sending messages between services and IoT devices and such. It's distributed and resilient, so there's no single point of failure, and it also runs on the Java Virtual Machine, which is probably why Tesla uses a programming language called Scala, which also runs on the Java Virtual Machine. Okay, so with regards to the virtual power plant, now that we've seen a high-level overview of Tesla's software stack, what they can do is, is query all the devices attached to a certain node. The devices each send back real-time data, I guess that's what their real-time aggregations microservice was for, and they can use this data in AutoBidder, uh, for example, to make decisions for energy trading. What's cool is that they can query all of these different types of heterogeneous setups, like for buildings and homes, and what they would really be interested in, in this example, would be how much charge is on your battery right now, and are you going to need that, or can we use it? And they aggregate everyone who replies back and is online in order to group together that energy to create this virtual grid. For AutoBidder, I'd assume that since AutoBidder is a professional tool, it's given to the grid manager or centralized authority as we talked about earlier, and that authority can only have access to the power walls within their network. You can have the Hornsdale Power Reserve in Australia accessing someone's power wall in the US and saying, okay, send me power. Because it's not on the same grid, that would be pretty bad. So having proper access rights is very important. And I'm not sure exactly how Tesla knows which grid system a particular power wall is connected to. They do say that they can organize or filter the devices by electrical substation topology. I guess that would be set up when you install the power wall originally. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think power walls have GPS. Uh, but again, they don't move very often. If you were to use a virtual power plant with Tesla vehicles, as we talked about in our million mile battery video, uh, which many people believe would enable that technology, and Electric has reported that Teslas uh, do have a bi-directional charger, so they are set up for that. But because vehicles move around a lot, maybe the GPS would be useful for this to help determine which grid a vehicle is connected to, 
or perhaps more reliably, you could connect your vehicle to some sort of fixed asset like a power wall for this to work. In that way, you could use your vehicle to effectively participate in the energy trading thing at one location and then drive over and plug it into a different grid and use it there as well. Because I'm guessing what would happen is Tesla queries the network by electrical topology, so it would have to know which assets are on which grid system. They get the data that they need to make an offer, and if they get accepted, they send a message back to those devices with a command or instruction to start discharging power. Now that's all done over the internet, but now the discharging of power is done on the grid, which is effectively a different network. So the two are sort of disconnected in reality, they're just modeled in software. So you better be physically connected to the correct grid, otherwise you could impact a different grid, uh, which may not be into the world if it's just a small number of power walls. Anyways, the power wall or your car battery start to discharge and all together with the combined power of all the devices discharging, it will boost the grid uh, during a peak time and then your grid or substation could sell that power to a nearby grid system, for example, or use it itself. Okay, as I said earlier, the idea of a virtual power plant isn't exactly something that Tesla invented. There are competitors. One company, which is also located in California, is called Enphase. I had actually owned a small amount of their stock for just a couple weeks and I sold it a few weeks ago uh, for no reason in particular other than it was up. And I like the company, the ticker symbol is ENPH. Now they install solar panels and they also have battery solutions. They're very similar to a pure play on Tesla's energy division and it looks like they partnered with this company called GreenSync to basically do a virtual power plant solution. Uh, so I still think that Tesla is, is better, they're much better, uh, because they have more scale, they have, they're completely vertically integrated as we talked about, and they have the vehicle side of things as well, uh, which could possibly cannibalize power walls depending on how Tesla does this, or it's going to complement power walls if the vehicle needs some sort of reliable connection point to the grid, which would be pretty good for Tesla. Now Model 3 is like 4 or 5 power walls on wheels, so it has the advantage of being mobile. But with a company like Enphase, you can capture the upside of just the energy division, whereas with Tesla, a large portion of the business will always be vehicle sales. So Tesla seems to already be quietly rolling out this technology, and it is absolutely game-changing. I think the adoption will start with AutoBidder, that's the killer app. When large power providers use AutoBidder, even if they don't have batteries, they can unlock the power of the batteries on their grid. It's really a win-win for the power providers who may be able to offload or avoid upgrading expensive infrastructure, and they can buy and sell electricity at better rates. Uh, Tesla, of course, because they're offering this end-to-end -end solution, they can make money off the power and subsidize their own products and be highly competitive, and also the consumers who can now profit or save money off their power walls and vehicles. One asset that I think is overlooked is that Tesla already has a giant distributed network of supercharger stations, which could be connected to the virtual power plant using their battery systems and also the vehicles that are charging. Many superchargers are also powered by solar panels, so they already have energy generation and they have access to storage. So I think the supercharger network can take advantage of this system when it's not in use by vehicle charging. I think that can actually save Tesla a lot of money and also make them extra cash by selling reserves at peak times and by buying them back when they're cheap. Uh, so they may be able to pass on some of these savings to consumers to actually sell electricity below the regular cost, which will make them hugely competitive to their competitors who are already usually more expensive anyways. So for example, this supercharger station has 20 cars charging right now and someone wants to offload some energy to it, they can power up all those cars with cheaper power. So overall, the virtual power plant is a difficult problem to solve. There's many, many parts all distributed everywhere on the planet. There are also local laws in different geographies that Tesla would need to abide by. But with Tesla's software and hardware expertise, and the fact that they are a leader in battery technology and figuring out how to scale battery production up to new levels, this makes the virtual power plant a perfect and lucrative addition to their business. And guys, let us know in the comments below if you think Tesla will start aggressively rolling out virtual power plant solutions after battery day, and if you think superchargers can benefit from the virtual power plant, or if there's any assets that Tesla has that we may have missed. Also, leave us any comments or questions on Tesla's million mile batteries, their software stack, or if you think Powerwall will be cannibalized by vehicles or will work complementary to them. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button, we'd super appreciate that. You can also hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos. And you can also support us further on Patreon at patreon.com slash the market is open, where we give a shout out to our patrons at the end of each video. Thanks so much for watching.